Coming up now on the Blessings Connection. Can I, can I remind you as gently as I can that God wants us to obey all the commandments. God, God does not want us to be selective and say, okay, this particular commandment I can agree with. I'm not going to murder anybody, so I can handle that one. But this commandment about that line, no, 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 no. <laughs> and so, over and over and over throughout all the Bible, God says to his people, obey the commandment. Somebody shout, obey the commandment. Obey the commandment. Somebody shout again, obey the commandment. Obey the commandment. Lord, teach me discipline. Lord, teach me discipline. So that regardless of what you do in my life, regardless of whether I'm having a good time or a bad time, regardless of whether I'm on the top of the mountain or at the valley, I will always obey your commandment. There's a purpose in life while we're living. We share a common goal to make it to heaven. Shining our lights so others might see. We've got a purpose in life, we're working hard to be with you. Suppose I told you, 
Suppose I tell you, as I was on the way, again, I'm not from the 21st century, but I was on my way to church today, and as I was on my way to church today, I had the radio on, and, and, and as I had the radio on, I was driving and I was listening, and I heard this commercial, and I don't remember what it said, but it just kept saying something like, this is the real thing. <laughs> It is the real thing. And, 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 and I walked into church and I was humming, it's the real thing, it's the real thing. I was trying to think, what was that? It's the real thing. And somebody heard me humming, it's the real thing. And they said, oh, preacher, that was a commercial for a soft drink by the name of. Uh -huh. What's your point, preacher? What if I tell you today that what God really wants is God wants some real boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, God, God wants some real boys to walk to your job tomorrow. God wants some real boys in your family at the family reunion. God wants a commercial. And what God really wants is to take somebody that he can bless, that understands discipline, so that they can be a walking built board for God. So somebody shout, bless me, God. So somebody shout, I'll be a billboard, board, God. Somebody shout, I'll be a commercial for God. Don't you see? Don't you see? God says a number of times, if, then I will. What are you saying, God? I understand that you're living in a world where everybody is just surviving, but I want to move you from surviving to... And all I need for you to do is understand one word, and that one word is... Somebody shout again, bless me, God. Somebody shout again, bless me, God. Bless me, God. I want to give you three keys. And I pray you will take these keys home because these keys will bless you. Because, again, I, I believe God is in the blessing business. You see, if, if you embrace the fact that, that God is in the blessing business, if you embrace the fact that God still blesses people, then I have a question for you. <coughs> Why could the next mayor of Houston come from the Garden Oaks Church Park? I mean, he is God, isn't he? I mean, he can do anything, can he? I, I mean, there was a time when the mayor of Houston, Mayor Louis Welch, came to this place. And so if God did it in the past, why can't he do it again? Amen. God raising somebody up. And as he raised them up, they never forget that God did it. Why can't if God is still in the blessing business? Why can't the next governor of Texas be sitting in this audience right now. My friend, Randy Bates, ran for state representative and he got his name out there. And I pray he'll run again. And I pray he'll run again. And I pray the Lord will take him to Hollywood. And he will never forget God took him there. Well, if God is still in the blessing business, if God is still using people to be walking billboards, if God is still using people to be commercial stuff, why can't the next CEO of Southwest Airlines be sitting in this audience today? In fact, if God is still in the blessing business, why can't the next billionaire that's going to appear on short tank? <laughs> Somebody clear that throat and say, that's me. <laughs> clear your throat. Clear your throat. <laughs> See, don't miss it. Don't miss it. I believe the world we live in is a dog world. Somebody says, dog. Oh. But God wants to lighten it up. And the way he's going to lighten it up is he's going to bless somebody. So every time somebody sees that person, that person will be known as a child of God. Amen. Three keys. Don't miss the three keys. Key number one, 
and it just oozes through the passage. Key number one, Lord, teach me discipline so that I will always obey your commandments. Teach me discipline. When you, when you read that passage from Deuteronomy chapter 28, in fact, when you look through the whole Bible, God keeps saying over and over and over and over again, the key to success is that you obey my commandments. Somehow, somehow we live in a world where everyone wants to pick and choose which commandment. Hmm. And, and we want to decide, well, well, you know what, I'm single, and, and in order for me to catch him, I got to drop it here and pull it there. Got to show a little bit of this. And so we start compromising. We start selecting which commandments we will obey. It's like, Lord, Lord will understand I had to pay the cable bill. And since I had to pay the cable bill, well, when the basket is paid. Hmm. And so we end up picking and choosing and deciding that we're not going to obey God for it. I, I need somebody to hear today. Yes, sir. That God wants his children to obey Amen. all his commandments. You want to go to the next level, somebody say amen. amen. You want your dreams to come true, somebody say amen. amen. Then one of the keys that you cannot minimize, it happens over and over in this passage, over and over through the Bible, is that we got to obey God. Amen. When, when God got ready to move Joshua to the next level, Joshua chapter 1, verse 7 and 8, God has a word with Joshua. It's like, Joshua, I'm getting ready to move you from surviving to thriving, but I need you to understand this. And so he says to Joshua, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the that you may be successful yeah. wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then, then you will be prosperous and successful. Can I, can I remind you as gently as I can that God wants us to obey all the commandments. God, God does not want us to be selective and say, okay, this particular commandment I can agree with. I'm not going to murder anybody, so I can handle that one. But this commandment about that line, no, 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 no. <laughs> and so, over and over and over throughout all the Bible, God says to his people, obey the commandment. Somebody shout, obey the commandment. Obey the commandment. Somebody shout again, obey the commandment. Obey the commandment. Lord, teach me discipline. Lord, teach me discipline. So that regardless of what you do in my life, regardless of whether I'm having a good time or a bad time, regardless of whether I'm on the top of the mountain or at the valley, I will always obey your commandment. Key number two. Key number two. Lord, teach me discipline so that I will always, always give you the glory. Isn't that a powerful thought? See, what happens is that many times God blesses us and we become so intoxicated with ourselves. I'm Dr. So-and-so, and so and i went to this school. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Well, uh, I'm, I'm... One of the things God says as he talks about six things he hates is God says, I hate a proud woman. When you become so full of yourself, when you act like it's mine, I did it all by myself, then we... 
then we minimize the fact that God did the blessing. That needs to be an attitude. This says, God, if you give me the cone off, God, if you give me the penthouse, God, if you give me the new car, God, if you give me the front, God, whatever you give me, I will always give you all of the glory. There's a song that we love to sing. And the song says, all the glory belongs to the Lord. It's not about me. It's not about you. No, God, no, God, you want me to be a billboard? I'll be a billboard for you. I won't be a billboard for myself. God, you want me to tell the world by my lifestyle that I'm different, that I belong to you? God, I can do that. Intoxication. The intoxication of things ruins so many of us. The Apostle James himself said, every good and every perfect gift comes from above. The Apostle Paul says, we brought nothing into this world and we can take nothing out. And, and, so, and so that needs to be a disciplined attitude that God, whatever you do for me, it's not going to go to my head. Hmm. I'll be the same yesterday, today, and forever. Because God, I know you are the potter and I'm just the clay. Every last Sunday of the month at 9 a.m., the ladies are getting together to study from the book, A Messed Up Sisterhood by Laura Hubbard. If I think of you and you think of me, We'll all have met needs and we'll be okay If I think of you and you think of me We'll all have met needs and we'll be okay We live in a world that says what about me If I don't take down the street Are you ready for days of good works? We certainly are. And if you would like to help our efforts, feel free to drop off backpacks, toiletries, hygiene products, water, sleeping bags, and any articles of clothing. This spring 16, come and help a loving church family that is committed to serving a hurting community. Days of good work. Church of Christ. 2016 is the year of the family, and through the month of April, we will be celebrating God-fearing singles. So whether you are single and serving, single satisfied in serving, or single searching and serving, then we look forward to seeing you at the Garden Oaks congregation. When God <coughs> blessed Saul, made Saul king of <coughs> the smallest tribe in Israel, Saul started out humble. In fact, he, he hid himself in the back. But before long, he got to give himself the glory and he ended up building a monument to himself. <coughs> can, can I remind us? And one of the keys to discipline is that we must obey all the commandments. Somebody shout, obey all the commandments. Obey all the commandments. Another key to discipline is that we must give all the glory to God. Somebody shout, all the glory to God. All the glory to God. Third key, and I want you to see it. The third key is, Lord, teach me discipline so that I will always use my gifts to bless them. I, I, I'm not going to use my gifts just on me, myself, and I. No, God, God, if you bless me, God, if you bless me, God, I'm going to bless somebody else. 
In fact, God, if you bless me to be a blessing, I promise you I will be a blessing. Jesus himself said, give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, press down, shaken together, and running over, it will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it'll be measured to you. Jesus said in another passage, Acts 20 and 35, it is more blessed to give than to receive. I, I, I submit to you that God wants to use some people right here in this audience today. I, I, don't, I don't know if it's going to be a blessing to your family. I don't know if it's going to be a blessing at your job. I don't know if it's going to be a blessing in the community. I don't know if it's going to be a blessing in this church. But I believe God raises up people and God blesses them so they can turn around and bless others. Amen. And if we lose the idea that God has opened the windows of heaven and poured a blessing on us so we can pour it out to everybody else, then God doesn't get the glory. Amen. Over and over in the Bible. Over and over in the Bible. There are two seeds that are mentioned there. They just seem to surface over and over and over and about. One of the seas, and you know that sea, that sea is called the Sea of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee, and I mentioned that sea, that, that's the sea that the disciples were on, and all of a sudden the wind started blowing and the waves started rippling. That, that, that sea is a beautiful sea. In fact, the Sea of Galilee feeds the Georgia River where Jesus got baptized. In fact, if you go around, there is another place that we quote all the time, Matthew 16, 16, where Jesus says, upon this rock I will build my church. Right on the banks of Caesarea Philippi, there's the Galilee River, the Sea of Galilee, the Sea of Jordan, the water flowing. Every ounce of water that happens to flow into the Sea of Galilee whether it's rain, whether it's from another source. The Sea of Galilee uses that. It's sheer. It's moved. It's used. But then there's another sea. It's called the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is the lowest spot on planet Earth. In fact, in fact, Nothing that flows into the Dead Sea ever comes out. The only way water comes out of the Dead Sea is it evaporates. In fact, nothing at all lives in the Dead Sea. No, don't, don't, don't you see? That if we want God to bless us, there has to be a spirit of open arms. There has to be an open heart. There has to be a joy that says, God, I freely receive and I freely give. Because, God, I recognize that you bless me, and since you bless me, I want to be a blessing to those I encounter. Oh, yeah. I, I believe today, right here today, that God wants to bless somebody in this audience. I, I, I don't know what the dream is. I, I don't, but, but I believe that God has put this thought on my heart so he can communicate to you. I heard you dream. I'm in the business of blessing you. In fact, I own the blessing factory. In fact, they call me I am because I can do anything. I will take you from survival to thrive. But I need you to understand, as I lift you high, yeah. always obey my commandments. Yes. I need you to understand, as I lift you high, yes. always give me the glory. Yeah. I Walking down on us, Lord. What would it profit me? What would it profit you? If we got all of the things we wanted, we, we got 
the right job. We got the right income. We got the right house. We got the right car. We got all of the things we wanted and then lost our soul. That's sad. And, 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 and so you really want to know what the Blessing Connection program is all about. It, it's about helping me. It's about helping you. It's about helping men and women be able to stand before God and hear God say in the life to come, well done. Don't you want to hear God say, well done? I want to hear God say, well done, our good and faithful servant. And so as you watch these videos of people getting baptized, understand what baptism really means. Baptism is really a symbolic act. It represents the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It, it represents the fact that I have given my life, I am being buried, I am being raised again to live a new life in Christ Jesus. It's, it's the opportunity for me to stand before God and hear God say, the substitution death of Jesus Christ, I no longer see you, I see him. It's Christ taking my place. It's not about my works, it's about the grace of God and that God sent his only begotten son. And so when you see someone get baptized, what they're really saying is that I've heard the good news that God sent his only begotten son. I believe that Jesus is God's son. I will confess with my mouth proudly that Jesus Christ is the son of God. I will repent of my sins. I no longer want to sit on the throne. I want Jesus to sit on the throne. I'm going down. I am getting baptized because I want to be able to say it's no longer I who lives in me. It's Christ who lives in me. That's what the passage is about in Romans chapter six, verse number four. Let me read it to you. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the father, we, that's you and I, we too may live a new life. Well, that's the plan of salvation. And for today, that's the blessing connection. I, I hope you enjoyed it. You can see what goes on. You know the path we have to There's a purpose in life. Our service times begin on Sunday morning with Bible study at 9 a.m. with classes for all ages, morning worship, 10 a.m., evening worship, 5 p.m. And on Wednesdays, our midweek Bible study begins at 7 p.m. Please come and be our guest. If you are calling to request prayer, please dial 1-855-45-CONNECT. Our Twitter account is at Connect With Him. If you would like to purchase, call 1-855-45-CONNECT. 